Today I was going to talk about one of the most important parts of brain tumor treatment, which is radiation. Um, often I will do a surgery on a patient and they will say, you know, what's after surgery? And um, in almost all cases of malignant gliomas, that would be a grade three or a grade four glioma, including glioblastoma, patients will um, be recommended to undergo radiation treatment. Other tumor types we also treat with radiation include grade two astrocytomas. Um, <clears throat> we treat meningiomas occasionally, especially when those meningiomas are more aggressive. I would say over 90% of meningiomas are grade one, but meningiomas are tumors that can also be quite aggressive if they have uh, high proliferation rates. So we're talking about radiation treatment and a lot of people are not really familiar with what radiation is. Uh, it's quite a complicated subject, but one uh, sort of simple concept is that radiation is light, uh, light energy. And we know that light has uh, various wavelengths from um, big wavelengths to very high energy wavelengths. And um, there is a visual light spectrum that goes from red light up to blue light and ultraviolet light. And ultraviolet light might be in this uh, area. And then the higher energy light sources can be x-rays. Most of the radiation treatments we treat our patients with with brain tumors are in the x-ray spectrum. And x-rays can be made by taking an atom, for instance, a tungsten atom that has protons and neutrons and electrons that circle around the outer shell. And if you generate enough energy and slam electrons into this tungsten atom, these outer shell electrons will send out x-rays. Another way that electricity, excuse me, another way that radiation can be generated is by having an unstable atom like cobalt-60. And um, this, is a, this is an unstable isotope of cobalt such that the neutrons and protons within the center of the atom will shift over time. And when they shift, they can release high energy radiation waves called gamma rays. Both gamma rays and x-rays for the most part can have similar energies and these high intensity waves are the workhorse of radiation oncology. And so let's get back to the question of why do you treat tumors with radiation? Well I mentioned a minute ago that let's say you have someone's brain and there's a brain tumor here and it's a glioblastoma. We know that the glioblastoma cells here are dividing rapidly and there may be cells that have percolated and infiltrated the normal brain in the area around the glioblastoma. If you take a, a random high power view of the cells away from the tumor, most of those cells are not mitotic. What does that mean? Most of those cells are sitting there not dividing. So when a cell is sitting there not dividing, let's say you have a neuron which could be shaped like this in the nucleus of the neuron. If you were to look at the chromosomes, they're just sitting there. They're not pulling apart. They're not dividing. So if you were to shoot x-rays or gamma rays through those chromosomes of a normal cell that's not dividing, what would happen is you would probably damage the DNA double strands. However, that doesn't really impact the cell because the cell isn't using that DNA to make more cells at that point. Although it can cause that cell to have a very slow death over time. However, if you go into the highly proliferating area of the tumor and you get cells that are dividing, coming back together, dividing, separating, dividing, and you shoot radiation into those cells and you hit the double-stranded DNA of those cells with x-rays or gamma rays, what happens is 
actually what happens is these high frequency x-rays will hit an oxygen molecule, O2, it'll rip off part of the oxygen molecule and make it a radical, a free radical. And this free radical can cause double-stranded breaks in DNA. And when oxygen is present and hits DNA and causes double-stranded breaks, most of that will be repaired within an hour or two by the uh, cellular machinery so that you can get those DNA breaks fixed. However, if that cell is dividing rapidly and these D DNA strands are pulled apart and the cell's trying to copy those strands and there are breaks and chopped up pieces of DNA everywhere, that cell may actually die. So the way radiation works is you're trying to target the DNA of rapidly dividing cells so that it'll be much more sensitive to causing a cell death event than a cell that's sitting there that's not replicating, that's just neutral. And because of that difference in sensitivity of the DNA of rapidly dividing cells versus cells that are in uh, non-mitotic cells, you get an effect on a rapidly dividing cell with radiation. It could be any cell that's dividing rapidly. Other cells in the body that are rapidly dividing include those in the inside of your GI tract and the dividing cells that produce your hair follicles. That's why if you radiate someone's brain in an area like this, they will often get a patch of hair loss right over the area where the tumor is being radiated. So um, a lot of people wonder about radiation and why do we always give radiation and how we decide the dosage. A lot of the, um, a lot of the dosing that is involved in radiation treatment has sort of been developed empirically over the years based on seeing how much the normal brain can tolerate and how much a patient can basically be given without causing harm to the normal brain. Um, any amount of radiation to the normal brain over time can be damaging. Um, so you have to make this trade-off. Based on just years and years of these kind of efforts, we've come to develop um, a idea of radiation being given five days a week for glioblastoma, for instance, over six weeks. And that's to a total dose of 60 gray. And 60 gray is a uh, way of measuring how much radiation total has been given. And it's given in fractions over those uh, 30 doses uh, because if you gave all that at once it would cause massive cell death because it would be uh, too much for the cells to take at that amount. But if it's given at l intervals, uh, you, you can knock out um, the rapidly dividing cells while the cells that are not rapidly dividing can compensate and be fixed so that the, the balance of effect is much greater on the tumor cells.